So breakdown of glucose happens in the tissue which leads to the formation of CO2, H2O and ATP. So CO2 diffuses out from the tissue in the vein where it dissolves in the blood plasma. The, the, pers the person that dissolves in blood plasma is very few, nearly about 5%. But most of it, more than 70%, forms bicarbonate ion. And some of it, rest of it, uh, forms carbamino hemoglobin. So CO2, being nonpolar, easily diffuses out from tissue and goes inside the red blood cell, where it combines with H2O to form H2CO3, that is carbonic acid, in presence of an enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase, which is, which is found only inside the red blood cell. So, carbonic acid being unstable, it dissociates into H plus and HCO3 minus ion, that is bicarbonate ion. So, this H plus and HCO3 minus are formed by the dissociation of H2CO3, that is carbonic acid. So H plus gets increased in concentration by the constant breakdown of H2CO3. This increasing amount of H plus concentration leads to an elastic effect which causes the dissociation of hemoglobin from oxygen that is the breakdown of oxyhemoglobin. So this H plus induces the breakdown of oxyhemoglobin which leads to the formation of HB and O2 separately. So this is the whole process. Meanwhile, what happens is that the HCO3 concentration, that is the HCO3 minus concentration, increases inside the RBC. And this increase in HCO3 minus ion causes an another reaction, which I'm showing right now. So let's move on to the hemoglobin oxygen complex. Let me find out another pen, blue color. So this HbO2 dissociates into Hb and O2. As I have told, due to the increasing amount of H+, plus, which leads to an allosteric effect. This H+, plus then, combines with hemoglobin to form H, Hb. So this hemoglobin combines with H plus to form HHB, but the oxygen which was released due to the breakdown of HbO2 is not separate. So this oxygen goes to the tissue and fulfills the demand of O2 for the breakdown of glucose, that is the cellular respiration. Meanwhile, what I have said about that concentration increase of H3 minus ion that it causes the diffusion from higher concentration to lower concentration as the H3 minus ion concentration inside the RBC is high. This H3 minus ion increases and causes it out to diffuse. So this H3 minus ion moves out of the cell and this movement of H3 minus ion from the RBC outside the cell causes an decrease of negative ion so it causes an imbalance of charge inside the cell so to meet, meet the demand of that negative ion one chloride ion from the outside of the cell that is from the blood plasma goes inside the rbc through a protein that is known as which i've drawn with the blue color it is called the bind 3 protein so this hcot minus ion which contains a negative charge goes out and to fulfill the negative charge one chloride, chloride ion goes inside the cell. So this movement that is the chloride from the outside to the inside which replaces the eight, um, negative ion of H3O3- is called chloride shift and this creates a balance in the charge inside the cell. So this was all about chloride shift. Let's talk about Hamburger's phenomena. So what happens in Hamburger phenomena is that the movement of water takes place from the plasma inside the RBC. Why? Due to the accumulation of HCO3 minus ion. 
the H3 minus ion diffuses from RBC into the blood plasma, but not the whole part diffuses out. So due to the retention of some amount of R HCO2 minus ion inside the red blood cell, the water moves from the blood plasma inside the red blood cell, and this causes a swelling of uh, the red blood cell inside the vein. And this swelling of red blood cell is termed as the Hamburger phenomena. So let's now move on to reverse chloride shift. So let's see what happens. Hello. So in this video, I'm talking about reverse chloride shift. So what happens in reverse chloride shift? So inside towards the membrane of alveoli, it is in alveoli exchange of gases takes place. What happens that oxygen from surrounding enters through the three layers of the alveoli corresponding with the pulmonary capillaries. Then the O2 diffuses from the alveoli towards the pulmonary capillary and goes inside the red blood cell and due to the entering of or, or the entry of O2 inside the red blood cell the P oxygen means the partial pressure of oxygen increases let me show you so and the three main uh, layers which are present corresponding to alveoli are squamous epithelium and endothelial tissue of the blood vessel. Between them, there is present another membrane which is called basement membrane. So now what happens, the post formed HHP that is a hemoglobin with a hydrogen ion complex the HHB which was formed in the chloride shift after the dissociation of oxyhemoglobin this HHB then dissociates due to the pa increasing partial pressure of PO oxygen that is which, is which is denoted by PO2 so this high amount of oxygen inside the RBC promotes the breakdown of HHB and hemoglobin then again combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin that is HHP so let me take the black pen so HBO2 is formed by a combination of hemoglobin and oxygen and this is known as oxyhemoglobin and the H plus which is released due to the dissociation of HHB this H plus moves out from that location and combines with HCO3 remember that HCO3 travels through blood plasma after it leaves the RBC near the tissue and when it reaches the pulmonary capillary it again enters into the RBC at pulmonary capillary due to the difference in uh, difference in concentration uh, where the concentration of HCO3 is very much high inside pulmonary capillary so it enters the RBC and combines with the H plus which is released by the HHB dissociation and combines to form H2CO3 that is carbonic acid in presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme this is denoted by that pink C dot A so then carbonic acid dissociates to form CO2 and H2 this CO2 goes towards the alveoli and moves out through nasal cavity to the surrounding so this CO2 diffuses out of the body through alveolar membrane and O2 enters from the environment inside the pulmonary capillary through this alveolar membrane so this so there is chloride ion inside RBC as it was there when the chloride shift occurred and due to the entry of HCO3- ion inside the RBC during reverse chloride shift so 
the negative ion of chloride is already present inside the cell. So when the H3 minus ion enters the RBC from the from the pulmonary capillary, the, so then there is two negative ion inside the red blood cell, which is not a proper balanced of charge. So to balance the amount of charge, again in a similar way but in reverse direction, the chloride ion leaves the RBC red blood cell. And this chloride ion leaves the RBC causing an balance of charge and again maintaining the total neutrality of charge. So in chloride shift what happened due to the, due to the movement of HCO3 from the cell to the surrounding chloride ion entered the cell to maintain the lost charge by HCO3 minus. Now when the HCO3 minus again enters the red blood cell in reverse chloride shift then chloride, chloride Cl minus ion leaves the RBC and again neutralizes the charge which is created by HCO3 minus. So in chloride shift the chloride enters the RBC and in reverse chloride shift the chloride ion leaves the RBC. Need help. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to get the notifications of more pharmaceutical videos coming up. Bye.